I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by uh, Dr. Daniel uh, Fisher. Dr. Fisher, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for talking to us today. Well, very nice to be here. Now, tonight you'll be up on stage to uh, win the Onsaga Prize. Tell us a little bit about that and, and your work that enabled you to win that. Okay. So Onsaga was one of the greatest statistical physicists, and I remember actually hearing of him when I was a, a kid because of having a father in the same, uh, um, in the same field. Um, so my, my work... Um, has been on the properties of disordered, uh, disordered materials. So most materials that people, physicists originally studied were perfect crystals. Um, they're very hard to make, but they're nice and ideal, and so people can understand them. But a lot of the most crucial properties are determined by defects of one kind or another in the materials. So semiconductors, the fact that they work is associated with the impurities. Superconductors, the fact that they superconduct is related to that. How, um, how materials break, is crucially dependent upon the disorder um, in the materials and they have all kinds of interesting dynamics and interesting new phases associated with the disorder. So this prize is really being given for my work on, on disordered materials. But that's, uh, but you're not currently working in that uh, particular field anymore, are you? No, I at some point um, started deciding I was getting a bit too professional and I could do things uh, <laughs> too well. And I've always liked being, uh, um, uh, being more of an amateur and one of my, I guess my intellectual grandfather, John uh, Hopfield, um, said to me long ago, he said, well, but I, I had introduced myself to new graduate students at Stanford where I am now and saying I was like them. I was trying to figure out what subject I wanted to work on when I grew up. And John Hopfield said, but Daniel, why do you have to grow up? That's one of the advantages of being a theorist is you don't have to. So I've actually been working in biology in uh, full time the last five years and a bit before that, and particularly on evolutionary um, dynamics and trying to understand quantitatively evolution. And it turns out a lot of ideas from coming from studying disordered materials and things has really been useful for that and for statistical, coming from statistical physics. Is that uh, common for people to uh, swap fields in that way? Um, it's not so uncommon. It's more common for physicists to branch out in other areas than the other way around, I think. And as uh, Phil Anderson, the, one of the greatest living physicists, he said that condensed matter physics is what condensed matter physicists do. And so there's been uh, various waves of physicists going into um, biology over the years. And the most recent one has included quite a few who were working on evolution as well. So we're trying to develop a physics community with the standards and ways of doing things in physics um, in the, as an inroad into, into biology. So winning today's prize, that's quite an honor for you. Yes, no, I'm very honored and rather humble if it looks at the lists of other, of other prize winners and some of the great um, statistical physicists um, over, I guess, from the last 50 years. Some of them were not so young already when they, when they got it. So it's, it's really um, very nice to be getting and nice having the appreciation from, uh, um, from colleagues. Well, thank you very much indeed for talking to us today. I hope you have a great meeting. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks.